Hello friends. I am actually a little bit nervous about making this video. It's it's a lot more personal than anything else I've ever put out here. I, I generally don't give too many life updates here on this channel and that's I, I purposefully centered this channel around my hobbies and my interests and not my everyday life but I can't fully explain what this vlog and what I hope to be a series of vlogs is all about without giving you at least a glimpse into my personal life. So somehow I escaped 2020 pretty much unscathed. Uh, I'm home 99% of the time anyway so quarantine really didn't have an impact on me and I was actually able to work all throughout the year. I never lost my job in 2020. In case you don't know my background is in biology uh, and a little bit in education and at the time I was an adjunct instructor at one of our local community colleges where I taught environmental science. And so we were actually really easily able to switch from on-ground classes to virtual online classes. And so that transition for me was really easy and it allowed me to continue working throughout the year, throughout 2020. Uh, and while I, I was able to work throughout 2020, the college as a whole was experiencing a decline in enrollment, which of course was to be expected. Um, people were losing their jobs. They couldn't afford to pay for school. So something, something had to go. And that was completely understandable. And so when January of 2021 came around, I really wasn't too surprised that I was out of work. I didn't have any classes to teach in that spring semester um, because, you know, classes have to meet a certain level of enrollment before we get to keep them during that semester. And uh, none of mine did. But again, I, I was pretty much expecting that. So for the first time in five years, I was out of work uh, with the exception of summer semesters, those are always reserved for full-time faculty, but for five years I always, every semester, had at least one class to teach. And I really, honestly, I was kind of okay with it at the time um, because I, I was thinking, well, okay, great, it'll give me a nice long hiatus, right? Um, I'll be off spring semester, be off summer semester, and come back in the fall refreshed and ready to go. But then fall happened, or I should say fall did not happen. My, the college was decided, or at least our department, the life science department, was making a transition from a traditional 15 week semester into a quarterly system, so a seven week semester, which meant instead of being on campus one to two days a week, I would now have to be on campus probably about four days a week, which in and of itself is not at all a problem for me. I would happily be there five days a week, <laughs> but my schedule and my wants are not the only thing that dictates my life. And I would say that it, it, it's not even the dominant thing that dictates my life. As a disabled person, I rely on other people to remain alive. I mean, I need help with all everyday things. I need help getting into and out of the bed and my chair and getting a shower and peeing in a toilet instead of on myself in a bed I can't get out of. And 
you would like to think that the home health industry would be full of these wonderful, responsible, reliable workers, but that is sadly not the case. Don't get me wrong, there are some very, very great ones, and I've had a few great ones, but I've also had a lot of very bad ones. And you couple that with all of the restrictions that both state and federal laws place on me and my care and my care workers and you have yourself the perfect recipe for disaster. And I lived in that disaster for many, many years, many years, until probably about four years ago when we learned that I was actually able to hire my cousin as a worker, as my care worker. And this is my cousin, Jessica, who I live with. This is her house, which has been absolutely wonderful. She is responsible and she is reliable and she's always here because we live together. But she also has another full-time job. And so she wouldn't have been able to work with that new semester schedule. And so it forced me to have to make a decision between keeping consistent, reliable care and the career that I literally worked my entire life to have. And I obviously I chose my physical well-being um, and I had to give up my teaching position. And it's, it's still something that weighs very heavily on me. Uh, I mean, it's been at this point a year and a half probably, and I'm still processing it. And it's still a lot to handle, to think about. And it's not necessarily the fact that I gave up the job. It's the reason why I had to. And I don't mean my cousin. I, she is doing the absolute best that she can. And I know that. And I'm very grateful for that. But I, I don't mean my cousin. She's doing the best that she can, and I know that. It's how these debilitating laws can be justified. Not only regarding my care, but also my income. I have to, in order to be eligible to receive care, to have my basic human needs met, I have to jump through so many hoops. And <sighs> I am not an emotional person. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's try that again, huh? On top of all of the regulations and restrictions placed specifically on my care, I also have to remain within very, very strict income limits in order to remain eligible to receive those very restricted care <laughs> and my teaching job was pretty much perfect in that regards because as an adjunct instructor I 
I, I could pick and choose, I was basically an independent contractor, where I could pick and choose how many classes that I taught every semester, and therefore I chose how much I got paid every month based off of how many classes I was teaching. And so that gave me the level of control that I require over my income to make certain that I still remain eligible to receive these care services that I require to stay alive. And so <clears throat> it's very difficult to find a job that fits my abilities and gives me that level of income control that I absolutely require. So you may or may not know <laughs> that I opened an Etsy shop towards the end of August, maybe the beginning of September of last year, 2021. Um, I have had it linked in the description of every video that I've posted since then, though I've never formally announced it anywhere until now. Hello, I have an Etsy shop. <laughs> and while it is not, or at least has not been, anywhere close to being as lucrative, not that I made a ton of money when I was teaching, but lucrative or consistent in money, it does give me that same level of control that I require. If by some miracle I was ever able to reach my income limit in sales for a month, I can put my shop on vacation and stop selling the rest of that month until the next month. That way I know that I stay within my limits. So Etsy is another great way to earn money that stays within all of my restrictions. It feels weird announcing this because self-promotion and I don't have the best relationship. This is very weird for me. I don't like it. <laughs> I know it's necessary, but I don't like it. <laughs> so I've always been drawn to the arts and I've been making it in some form or fashion my whole life. And I distinctly remembered when Etsy first came out, I think I was I might have been in high school, but I think I was in college, like maybe freshman or sophomore year. And I distinctly remember when Etsy first became a thing, wanting an Etsy shop. Though I had no idea what I would even sell or make for this Etsy shop. At the time, I was really only dealing with my first love and still my favorite medium of soft pastels and Originals, not really all that high demand, and by no means was my art up to that standard. Anyway, I just knew that I wanted one. And so, you know, the years went on, Etsy grew. I graduated from college, I graduated from grad school, and then I graduated from grad school again. <laughs> and then I had some messy life changes and then I got that career I was working for. I took up a new and very important craft during a global pandemic. I lost that career and I now have that Etsy shop. <laughs> so full circle, full circle. And that very important craft I'm speaking of is hand embroidery. I, which technically I started it before the pandemic. I was kind of, had maybe done one or two pieces before that, but I really got into it during the pandemic over the last two, three years. And that is actually what I've been selling in my shop. So not original pieces, 
but patterns for my original designs. <laughs> and right now, I only have three up that are active right now. And this year has been pretty busy, a lot going on in terms of life. And so I've actually only released one new pattern this year. Um, I am currently working on a collection, but they're taking a lot longer than I anticipated that they were going to take. So I think these, when they come out, it'll be sometime next year. But, so I currently have three active listings for embroidery patterns. They are digital patterns, they're digital downloads. And overall, I'm really, I'm happy with how the packets, like the instructional packets are laid out. But I think it's time to kind of do a revamp, which is what I've kind of been working on. I've been wanting to kind of update it a little bit, give it a little bit more uh, information and how to for all those very beginner people if you're new to hand embroidery. So while I do have some of that information in the current layout of the booklets, I want to add a little bit more information and add more illustrations to those packets to kind of help showcase or um, describe what word am I looking for? Explain the written words in illustration forms for those visual people. So that's what I have been doing and that's what we're doing in this very first studio vlog is just simply revamping what I already have and I'll be using that format going forward. It's, I think hopefully it'll be a lot more uh, aesthetically pleasing and a lot more uh, user-friendly and helpful than what I currently have. So that's what you saw in the intro. I was working on creating the individual pages or sections of information on Procreate and I'll then add and put into order for a PDF on my laptop, um, which I think is what we're going to do next. I've gotten most of the pages pretty much how I want them, I think. I'm going to put it together in the order that I want them to be grouped in in the final file. But I think I'm pretty happy with what they are. I'm sure there's going to be changes here and there. The bulk of what I'm doing is going to be used over and over again for each pattern because it's beginner stuff like how to thread a needle and how to start your stitches and end your stitches and how to use a hoop and transfer your pattern and all of that. And then there will be specific pages that are specific towards each pattern. So what colors I suggest that you use, what size needles I suggest you use, uh, what kind of stitches you should use for the pattern, things like that. So while this is a big initial load of work, it's something that I can use over and over again. <music> Can you hear the bird that sounds like an alarm? <laughs> okay, so, um, I'm really liking my hair today. Not gonna lie, I wish it looked like this every day. I had it up in braids yesterday when it's still a little bit wet. Um, but anyway, 
I realized that I haven't actually showed you any of the pieces that the patterns are based off of, so I thought I'd do that now. First up is the pattern called I Love Fall A Latte. Hopefully self-explanatory. A latte with some fall foliage around here. This is actually the very first piece I ever made a pattern for. Okay, then we have this one. These little spider webs, October trees with spider webs. This is actually, I think this is probably my favorite one that I've done so far. I really love this one. But we have that. And this was actually the first time that I figured out how to combine embroidery with soft pastels, which is what I normally love to work with. So this background, which is not actually part of the pattern, but I do show you how I do it in a video. So if actually, if you've been here a while, you've actually already seen this one. The background is painted with soft pastels and not paint, which I've actually learned that I really enjoy combining the two. And then this one, I don't actually have the original for anymore. Uh, a friend of mine really loved it, so I just sent it to her. But it's this sort of duology set. Again, the painting is not part of the pattern, but I used fabric paint for this one. Um, but it's just sort of a like sun and moon, stars, sunset, sunrise. Okay, so those are the three that are currently available and will be available when you are watching this. But I do have a couple of seasonal patterns that I did and released last year, which I think I'm probably going to release again this year because I don't have any new ones to share. And so the first one of those, which would be released in November for American Thanksgiving, is this Give Thanks Rainbow Corn. It's, I don't know if it's considered stump work, but it is sort of 3D um, with some ribbon embroidery and uh, woven pico stitches here. Okay, and then lastly, I just have this little Santa. Um, he, his beard probably needs to be flipped up a little bit. He got a little squished in storage, but he's just a cute little, uh, where's the camera? The cute little gray and pink Santa. The green is painted with fabric paint, and then his skin and rosy cheeks is actually made with watercolor pencils. So this is one of the original packet that this is what they look like before I redid them. So it's just very basic little PDF, a letter. So all of this information is still in the new packet, but there's a little bit more information and a lot more uh, illustrations to help kind of explain more of what the words are saying. All of the packets come with four or three different sized patterns. So you get a, a four inch pattern, a six inch pattern, and an eight inch pattern. And that hasn't changed. You still get that color guides, stitch guides, uh, and stitch tutorials to go with each of those stitches. So that's the old one. And here is what the new ones look like. Um, again, all the same information plus some. A another difference is actually giving you links to each of the pages so that within the PDF there are internal links that you can just click on anything that you want to know about, like using thread, and it'll take you straight there. And then you can navigate back by going to the rows at the bottom. So we have table of contents that is navigational, and then we just go through each of the pages. And they're, they're color coded so you know what section you're in. Yeah, so that's it. And then there'll be a separate file with the patterns, which again, you still get the all three of them, depending on what size you want to use. So four, six, and eight. Okay, so that was everything that either is currently available as you're watching this or will be available in the next couple of months. I, I'm kind of in a hold right now. 
I am almost, almost finished. I am waiting on some feedback to come in because Paige was so very sweet enough to agree to proofread for me. So I am just kind of waiting on that feedback and then when I get it back, I will make any necessary changes, tweak things here and there. And that'll really be about it. I really am basically done with these new versions of the booklets and patterns. I'm not really going to be able to show you me actually updating the listings on Etsy because I actually need a link to this video to put into one of the pages, which I can't do until I upload this video. So I imagine I'm actually probably just going to stop it here. Um, everything will be up and live and ready to go by the time you actually watch this. I'm not sure how often these kinds of videos will go out and I don't think it'll always be shop specific. Um, and they may just be general creative projects that I'm working on here and there. Um, I do know there'll be at least one more <laughs> because I have been over the last several months I've been really really wanting to try bookbinding and so I've kind of actually designed my own planner for next year so I'm gonna try and bind it into an actual physical book and I probably will bring you along when I do that. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that in the next month or so but other than that I really don't have any specific plans for these videos and again I don't know how often they'll actually come up but I do plan on having at least more of these in some way. If you're here this far, let's just do a standard studio vlog emoji of a needle and thread because it's very fitting. And I, I truly, truly thank you so much for being here and I hope that means I see you soon. Mm -hmm.